games are a real problem. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games. If you play video games, if you watch anime, keep your mouth shut. But I just think people watching other people play video games is a waste of time. So this is part two in response to the first video I did called Why Gaming is a Beautiful Hobby. I'll link that video in the description in case you want to watch that one first, but here's a quick recap. In that video, I discussed a list that had made its way around the internet called Least Attractive Hobbies for Men According to Women. This list ranked gaming as the number one least attractive hobby ever, trumping online trolling, gambling, and every other possible hobby to have ever existed. I discussed why I felt gaming was one of the best hobbies in the world, but I mainly focused on the success of the medium as a whole. I explained how gaming makes more money than the movie and music industry combined, which is true, but I never really covered the art side of the hobby. So I figured, let me do a part two and discuss it further. Gaming is more than just the financial success, and that doesn't explain why gaming is a beautiful hobby. It gives it justification, but I really want to talk about what I mean when I say it's beautiful. Another thing I didn't really cover is why some people dislike gaming. For what reason? Is it unattractive despite being successful? And are aliens among us? I will cover all in this video, so without further ado, let's get into it. A quick side note, I just want to say thank you for all your support. This channel has grown so much in the last six months and I want to say thank you. If you like gaming, please consider subscribing and if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like because of the algorithm and blah blah blah. Anyway, let's get into the video. So, first of all, let's discuss why gaming is a beautiful hobby. Video games are a powerful form of art because they combine multiple artistic disciplines, visual design, music, storytelling and interactivity into a cohesive and immersive experience. Like other art forms, video games provoke emotions, inspire creativity and provide a platform for self-expression. Through rich narratives, stunning graphics and carefully crafted soundscapes, games engage players in a way that allows them to actively participate in the artistic process, shaping the outcome of the story. Video games are the pinnacle of storytelling, as instead of watching a story unfold, like you would in a book or a TV show, you yourself get to experience the story from the perspective of the character, building and crafting your own story along with it. The interactivity unique to video games elevates them beyond passive art forms, making them an evolving canvas where creativity, technology and personal experience intersect. When you look at some of the stories told in the comment section of part 1, you really see its effect. Some people are inspired to create from games and they go on to make their own games or paintings or they write stories and other types of art. Some of the most creative people online started out in gaming. Gaming promotes problem solving and critical thinking as players must strategize and adapt in game. Many games require teamwork, enhancing communication and collaboration skills. In fact, one of the comments in the last video explained that online gaming helped him open up, become more confident and become a great leader, which he actually applied to other parts of his life. Games also improve hand-eye coordination and reaction time, and the military has actually been using video games as a training tool for soldiers. Story-driven games offer insight into empathy and moral decision-making by allowing players to experience different perspectives and ethical dilemmas. Many people in the comments said that they learned language through a game. Many people learned English as it wasn't their first language and through gaming they have now mastered it. I mean, I learned some Japanese from Yakuza, for goodness sake. Additionally, some games focus on historical, scientific or cultural content, offering educational experiences. Kingdom Come Deliverance, for example, takes place in the early 15th century in the Kingdom of Bohemia, and it features real people, real places. It and many other games are the best teachers because rather than reading a textbook or watching a video, we actually get to live in these places and see what it's like. Games have taken us to ancient Egypt, ancient Greece and many other locations. Video games educate, develop and inspire art from others. If someone wants to become an artist, they must first be inspired by art. 
someone must see a painting in order to be inspired to paint. Although some people look down on games, they don't realise how much people take from them. I've seen gamers make figurines, sculptures, replicas of items, paintings, videos, music. It really is the ultimate form of art and brings out the best in some creative individuals. In the last video, I explained how video games were continuing to improve with each year that passes, and I do stand by that. We have seen stagnation in other media, but when you look at video games, the graphics, the writing, the acting, the experience, everything gets better each year. I know there's some negative sides to gaming, and I've done a video on that, just in case you want to check it out, but video games are the ultimate form of art, and the industry deserves the respect. It is a beautiful hobby. It also saves lives and helps people get through tough times. It can be used as the ultimate form of escapism, and I'm sure most gamers have a story that they could share. When things were bad, certain games got me through those difficult times. Without them, I would have really struggled. Most people work hard, go through stress that you would not believe, and video games are their way of taking a minute, catching a breath in this fast-paced world. When they finally get a minute to use their time how they would like. It helps them recharge and get up and go again. I advise you to check the comment section in part 1 where others have told their stories much better than I can. This is an incredibly underappreciated side of gaming and why gaming is a beautiful hobby. So why do people talk down on it? Why do they hate it? Well the answer is actually pretty simple, it's because they don't understand it or they have a stereotypical view on the medium. Now, go back to the days of when first video games came out, and you have games like Pong, Pac-Man, and Space Invaders. I honestly think some people saw those games and assume that's what gaming still is. I believe that when little Jimmy tells his parents that he's playing Red Dead Redemption 2 for 4 hours, they think Jimmy sat in his room playing Pong for 4 hours. I mean, poor, poor Jimmy. They don't understand how far the games of today have come. They see a movie as sophisticated and a game as childish or basic, like every game is a cartoon. They'd rather watch grown-up films and TV shows. But little do they know, if they actually experience gaming nowadays, they would actually love it. Look at Arthur Morgan and the story in Red Dead Redemption 2. What amazing plotline of betrayal and redemption. The Last of Us literally was turned into a TV show because it was that good of a story and character writing. Witcher 3, Metal Gear Solid, Baldur's Gate 3, right, I'm, I'm not going to go off and list every game, but gamers know what I'm talking about. Games nowadays are so well written. They have great characters, comedic sections, twists, moments that literally make you cry, give you goosebumps. They're not just on par with any great movie or TV show, they're probably a little bit better. The worlds we visit in these games, the province of Skyrim, the historical city of Novigrad, the futuristic city of Night City. These worlds are amazing and feel alive. Look, I can't do gaming justice in just a 15 minute video, but it's absolutely amazing. And the friends that we make and the bonds that we share online as well, they're unmatched. But back to my point though, some people have not experienced this. They assume people are just playing either childish or simple games, or they play games that don't have stories, online games with battle royales and death matches. I mean those games no disrespect, as I enjoy them myself, I'm just saying that some people are not even aware that games with deep written stories exist. Thus, they just group us all together as one. Waste of time, no substance. But I promise you this, if they ever took the chance to play one of these games with a well written story, a good narrative, they would understand. But until they do, they just consider it all one in the same. Another thing that we often hear is that a video games is a waste of time. Watching others play is a waste of time. Now this statement is just silly because if that's the case then watching others play sports is a waste of time. In fact, watching TV, Netflix or YouTube videos are all technically the same thing. Watching others do other things that we could do. So that's social media, the news, I mean, it's pretty much everything. So if you say that watching others play games is a waste of time, then basically everything is a waste of time. But why do we watch top level sports? Well, to be entertained. I want to watch the best players play, to appreciate talent in something that we can all do. 
We can all play football, but seeing the best players ever play against the other best, it's just entertaining. I don't want to watch me run around the pitch, I want to see really talented people. It's the same with games, and some people watch others play the offline games because they're being entertained by the one playing it, or because they don't have that game or the console. The internet allows us to share this together, and that is a beautiful thing in itself. Such a stupid quote, isn't it? In fact, listening to him say that, one could argue, is, is a waste of f***ing time. Now, a lot of these influencers and others have talked bad about video games. It's usually because they don't understand them, like I said, and haven't experienced them, at least properly, but they often say that playing them is a waste of time. Now, I'm going to get a little bit philosophical here, but bear with me. These influencers consider gaming a waste of time because it's non-productive. I hope in this video and in part 1, I've now shown that that's not true, but let's, let's pretend anyway. What does it mean to be non-productive? Does it mean to not be working or self-improving? So by their logic, they're saying that if you are enjoying yourself at all, you're wasting your time by their metric. I'm going to tell you a story that you may have heard about a fisherman. An investor is at the beach and he sees a small boat with one fisherman inside. He sees that the fisherman has caught several large yellowfin tuna. The businessman compliments the fisherman on the quality of his fish, and he asks, how long did it take for you to catch these fish? The fisherman replies, well, only a little while. And the businessman asks, well, why didn't you stay out longer and catch more fish? And then the fisherman said he had enough to support his family's immediate needs. And the businessman asks, well, what do you do with the rest of your day? He said that after fishing, he went to the beach, spent the day with his wife and his children drinking wine. The businessman said, but you could spend more time fishing, and with the proceeds, you could buy a bigger boat. And with the proceeds from the bigger boat, you could eventually buy several boats. Eventually, you would have a fleet of fishing boats. Instead of selling your catch to a middleman, you could actually sell directly to the processor, eventually opening up your own cannery. Then you would control the product, processing, and distribution. How long would that take? asked the fisherman. Well, it would take 15 to 20 years, said the businessman. And then what? When the time is right, you would announce an IPO and you would sell your company stock to the public and you become very rich. You would make millions. And then what? asked the fisherman. Well, then you'd be able to retire, move to a villa and spend every day on the beach with your wife and children drinking wine. Do you get it? Now, I'm not a philosopher, but I do know that we only have one life. I totally believe that you should be productive, as a lot of times productivity leads to one's self-fulfillment and makes you feel happy. However, ask yourself, if you did win the lottery tomorrow, what would you do? If video games are a part of that life, then why feel guilty about it now? I can't tell anyone how to live their life, but balance is key and so is moderation. That list that said that women found gaming as the most unattractive thing is probably not even real, but I promise you this, if someone plays a game 24 hours a day, doesn't look after themselves or their family and puts the game above everything else, it ain't gonna be attractive. No hobby would actually be attractive. Likewise, if someone works every single minute of their day and never enjoys a second of their life, they're gonna be miserable and make others miserable too. The key is to achieve a balance, where you can improve each day, do what you have to do, pay your bills, look after your family, and still give yourself an hour or two of time for you, whether it's gaming or not. That, in my opinion, is the best place to be. Moderation is the key thing to take away. Whether it's work, leisure, food, or gaming, doing something in moderation prevents burnout, dependency, or harm. Moderation fosters self-control and mindfulness, allowing individuals to enjoy life's pleasures while avoiding excess that could lead to emotional strain. If you eat enough salads, you will eventually gain weight. Now look, I'm just a guy on YouTube and I don't really know too much, but I do know this. I love video games. To me, they inspire emotions and ideas that I can't get anywhere else. If I gave them up entirely, I would not be happy. This could hurt my creativity, my channel, and my ambition. Video games can distract, but they can also help maintain emotional balance and inspire creativity. I've read comments in the first part of this video who said that gaming changed or saved their life. Really moving stories. People who talk terrible about video games without really knowing what they are, 
don't really see this side. And to attack someone or stereotype video game players into just one is the wrong thing to do. There will always be individuals who become addicted to things like gaming or they neglect responsibilities, but don't pull everyone together with those who only play occasionally and have families, jobs, and they use video games as a way to help them perform better in those roles. That's not fair. Gaming is a beautiful hobby and there are so many positive things that can come from it. Do not let the few bad example cover over those parts. And as far as the list goes on screen about the attractive hobby thing, this is exactly what I was talking about with people stereotyping and putting certain people into groups. I'm not sure which women made this list, if they even did, but think about it like this. What kind of person makes a list ranking other people's attractiveness based off of the things that they enjoy the most. So things that make others happy, which make them unhappy. That's a pretty narcissistic person and not the type of person anyone should have to date. It's evil actually. And as we saw in the comments section of the last video, a lot of women love gaming and have no problem with anyone who plays video games. It's all about enjoying it in moderation. So to my fellow gamers, enjoy your games, enjoy this beautiful form of art that we all cherish, but enjoy it responsibly. That way, you'll get the most out of it and be able to enjoy it to its maximum. We only live one life, and if gaming enhances or improves your life even 1%, don't feel obligated to give it up. Life is a journey full of highs and lows, and if you want to enjoy your life a little bit whilst you're on the journey, don't let anyone tell you what is a waste of time, as it's not their time to spend. It's your time, and only you can decide what is the best way to spend it. Time you enjoyed wasting is not time wasted. Anyway, that's the end of part two. I'm not sure whether I'm going to do a part three, but let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with me, or do you think I'm wrong on this one? How has gaming impacted your life? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I'm Av Gaming, where we identify what makes great games great, and what could make good games great as well. Thanks for watching, Av out. Oh, and as far as the aliens go, look, I'm under strict instructions not to discuss it, but there was this one time I was in Area 51, and...